In September of 1991, Q-Tip, Fife Dog, and Ali Shaheed Muhammad blessed us with one of the greatest albums of all time. The Low End Theory is a work of art. A tribe called Quest created a soundscape that is one part funky beats, one part dope rhymes, one part jazz sensibility, and of course, that low end that made this album so magical. The engineer from this record, the great Bob Power, called it the Sgt. Peppers of hip hop, and I couldn't agree more. Let's take a deep dive on one of my favorite albums, The Low End Theory, the bass lines that make it great, and a few Easter eggs that you might not know about. I talked about this one in my Hip Hop Bass Lines video originally played by the now late, great Mickey Bass. It's from an Art Blakey album called A Chant for Boo. The genius is how they used the sample. Rather than just lifting the line off the original record, they slowed it down, they chopped it up, and what was a 6A groove became a 4-4 line. That's called music, ladies and gentlemen. This is another really creative example of sampling. It's from a Jack DeJanet track called Minya's The Mooch, and the original player is longtime New York jazz bassist Mike Richmond. The original line was slowed down and rearranged to make what you hear on the record. I've always dug how they started the line on beat three. When the vocal comes in, you can hear that the B flat is actually beat one. Another great bass line. Bob Power processed pretty much all the samples that appear on this record, and you can definitely hear this bass line being run through some kind of filter. I just wish I knew where it came from. I cannot figure out where this sample originates, although I've read it could possibly be the song Melting Pot by Booker T and the MGs. Anybody out there with any ideas? Let me know in the comments. As soon as I heard this song in high school, I knew that it was a weather report sample although they did not initially give them credit in the liner notes. It's a classic from their Mr. Gone album called Young and Fine, and the original bassist is none other than the late, great Jocko Pastorius. And the hook on this one is pulled from another jazz album from 1975 by saxophonist Gary Bartz. Now, this one was a very special moment for jazz and hip-hop. I clearly remember, as a teenager, hearing Ron Carter play on this track, and not as a sample, but live, was a very important moment. The track is built off of a two-bar figure. adds subtle variations to this figure each time. So many 
many people were still dogging rap at this point, and Ron brought so much legitimacy to hip hop by just playing on this one track. I remember it was big news that he played on this album. And it was really cool to just hear him do his thing on this track, which I just recently found out is a sample of the Heat Wave song, Star of a Story. Verse two, Q-Tip says, play like Bobby Bird on your back, which is a subtle reference to the sample that they use for Everything is Fair coming up at track number 10. I love this track. I love the guests coming in on this track. Arguably the funkiest bass line on the record. It's from a song by the Fatback Band called Wiki Wacky from 1974 and the original bassist was Johnny Flippin. It's been slowed down a little bit and combined with beat elements by Aretha Franklin and James Brown. So funky. And who caught the theme from Midnight Cowboy that's dropped in there? This is an organ line from a Grant Green live record, and they sped it up just a little bit. The original player was Neil Craig on the organ. At the end of the first verse, Q-Tip calls himself the Midnight Marauder. There's also definitely some Bob Power magic on this one. The bottom end is juice, and it just bounces the whole groove. This is one of those dark, minor sounding tonalities that MCs seem to love to rhyme over. This set a tone for what we were going to hear in 90s hip hop. The sample is from saxophonist Cannonball Adderley's 1971 album, Black Messiah. And it features Walter Booker on bass and a young George Duke on keyboards. This is just genius. There are so many great samples that are working together to make this song sound so good. We start out with the average white band horns, we add a dash of Grover Washington's Hydra, and we speed up a little bit of Minnie Ripperton. Beautiful. The bass line was sampled from the brilliant Adventures in Paradise album, an album he would go to again later on for the Lyrics to Go sample. The original bassist, was Ed Brown. There is a reason that James Brown and George Clinton's music is so sampled. It's just unbelievably funky. You cannot duplicate that feel. This line is from a Bobby Bird track called Hot Pants, I'm Coming from 1971 that was produced by the godfather of soul himself and features the JBs backing him. This was just after Bootsy left the band and the bass was played by long time JB bass man, Fred Thomas. It was slowed way down from the original, but you can hear how precise Fred Thomas plays. It's amazing.
This whole tune is pulling groove and melody from Jimmy McGriff's take on a jazz standard called Green Dolphin Street. I can actually remember how excited I was when I heard this for the first time and to actually recognize them playing an actual tune. It's an inspired choice, considering that the tune uses a pretty cool pedal point at the end of the phrases. And did I mention that the original bassist on this sample is the great Sam Jones? Well played, gentlemen. Trivia question, how many tracks does Ron Carter appear on on the low end theory? The answer is two. One on bass and one on cello. The sample comes from a 1960 Eric Dolphy recording called Out There. If you listen hard to the chorus sections where the phone is dialing, underneath you'll hear Dolphy playing flute and Ron playing cello on the melody of a tune called 17 West. The bass line was pulled from the same track, and it's from a solo played by the great George de Vivier on bass. This track makes the fourth time that Arsenio Hall is mentioned on the album, including bugging out, vibes and stuff, and what. We come back to the dark tonalities again with this line, another organ line, a sample that comes from Jack McDuff and his tune, Obligato. This was about a 17 second section of the song that they built one of the most iconic hip hop tracks of all time on. It slowed down and beefed up a little bit and it perfectly complements every rhyme on top of it. I remember seeing Tribe do this on the Arsenio Hall show, which was kind of like my generation's version of the Beatles appearing on Ed Sullivan. Low End Theory changed the game. It set a standard. The marriage of hip hop and jazz, the artistry of the samples, the bottom end that brought it all together. It's one of the greatest albums of all time, period. This series is all about great bass playing, and this album has all the names. George de Vivier, Sam Jones, Walter Booker, Mike Richmond, Fred Thomas, and of course, Ron Carter on the bass to my man Ron Carter on the bass. And I'm out. <laughs>